as we prepare to get back to work. Let's ponder the obstacles. I count three so far. First, the media. To capture their essence completely, let's roll this week's worst question. An American president loses more Americans over the course of six weeks than died in the entirety of the Vietnam War. Does he deserve to be reelected? So, yeah, we've lost a lot of people, but if you look at what original projections were, 2.2 million, we're probably heading to 60,000, 70,000. It's far too many. One person is too many for this. Great answer, but an asinine question. Does a leader deserve to be reelected after a tragedy strikes? Well, that's what the election is for, you dope. The voters determine who deserves to be reelected. And you can apply this non-logic just about anywhere. You know, a tornado killed the Johnson family on Main Street, the same Main Street that Mr. Smith delivers the mail on. Shouldn't Mr. Smith resign from the United States Postal Service? See, as long as the media has no powers of self-reflection, they'll never learn and keep making moronic observations like this chap. And if we go to break, if there's a good thing about this economic crisis, it's been the clean air and views we haven't seen for a long time. Take a look. A uh, remarkable analysis. Death and economic turmoil creates awesome visuals for our carbon belching TV network. Imagine, Chucky, how even better the environment would be if the networks also stopped working. Somehow, I don't think he thought that through. And finally, how's this for a question? Um, will you pledge never to lie to us from that podium? I will never lie to you. You have my word on that. <laughs> what kind of answer did this grandstander expect? Clearly, the question was only asked to get headlines for herself. She's not just grandstanding. She's the whole damn stadium. So what to expect from this crew as we get back to work? More armchair quarterbacking, questioning the timing, the phases, the risk, and so on, which is fine. If there's a problem, they'll find it and pin it on you-know-who. Not the Chinese, of course. Who needs red China when you have orange Godzilla? So for the media and us humans, let's introduce Gutfeld's Law, which goes like this. If you contributed nothing at the time of the event, then you can't point fingers in the future. Meaning if you have no suggestions of when to go back to work or when to shut down the economy or when to shut down travel or not, and you have no evidence that you ever said the contrary, then take your future analysis and shove it up your ass. If you had no skin in the game, you have no place at the table. Then there's the next obstacle, the politicians, who, of course, are going to politic, exploiting real problems for their own political survival. Every Democrat will blame Trump for the pandemic. Adam Schiff will lead the way, already announcing he'll be helming a commission, which is hilarious, given that his other quixotic misadventure, the impeachment proceedings, allowed the outbreak to take us by surprise. You know, I won't say Adam has blood on his hands, but if he were underwater, he'd be mistaken for a lobster. Flatten him and he'd make a terrific sunset. And then, of course, there's Hillary, suddenly appearing as Joe Biden implodes, like a drooling vulture eyeing a desiccated hiker. She pretended to be at his virtual town hall to endorse Joe, but really it was an opportunity for her to knock Trump, who humiliated her in 2016, while hoping, obviously, for a rematch. But, you know, I think Biden did a pretty good job. Check it out. Hey there, green shirt lady. I like green. It's like yellow and blue, but combined. It's genius. Thank you so much, Joe. It's a real pleasure to be here with you. I wish you were here in person, green shirt lady. I've been binge watching the West Wing. Yeah, 154 episodes straight. That is not only disgraceful, it is so outdated. It is an anachronistic. Hey, hey, take it easy, green shirt. TV presidents are cool, especially Martin Sheen. He's got that voice, nice head of hair. Maybe we ought to go with him instead of me. What do you say? Think of what it would mean if we had a real president, not just somebody who plays one on TV. All right. How about movies, though? You remember when Bill Pullman saved us from all those aliens? I bet he'd be willing to do that again. Imagine the difference that'd make. Well, I know what a difference it would make because I've been there. I've seen firsthand what presidents can and should do. You know what presidents can and should do? Cocaine. 
That'll get you going. Just kidding, lady. Stay in school, kids. Don't do drugs. <laughs> and thirdly, there is the disease itself. Going forward, every decision has a risk. Stay home indefinitely. People suffer. Go back to work. The disease could return. We've talked this thing out before. We're smart adults. We can't be trusted. I mean, we flattened the curve like pros. Not bad for our first time ever. It's a lesson for all you undergrads taking courses on American history where your feeble, bitter professors portray the country as oppressive, genocidal, greedy. It's all BS. This evil capitalist society, in fact, just put its entire system in jeopardy in order to save the sick, the weak, the old. You know, even Sweden didn't do that. And aren't they the model for progressive compassion? I do love their fish. Now, the president's Economic Recovery Task Force released a study predicting that a fast reopening will end America's recession with a quick recovery in the fall. I know this because I read it in their press release. I hope they're right. I think we all kind of feel like we're at a baseball game in the 15th inning and we just want this damn thing to end. Instead, you don't want to go home. You want to leave home and go to work. You know, which reminds me, I'm hoping a litigation shield will be attached to these bailouts so companies can get back to work without worrying that they might get sued by a guy who claims he got the corona from your bar stool. Fact is, you're not going to restart civilization if lawyers are in the room. Imagine if they were present in other world-defining moments. You think Columbus would have discovered America? No way, says a 15th century Ralph Nader with those awful working conditions in those ships. You think Ben Franklin would have enticed electricity with a kite? No, where the, where the hell's his permit and his helmet? Although he looks like he's wearing one. And forget discovering penicillin. It's a mold. Think of the allergies. So maybe let's be a little reasonable. We're all trying. We're all on the same team. So while we all go back to work, maybe you lawyers take half days, chill out, catch a movie, because there's good news coming. We've got promising drugs, flattened curves, newly adopted hygiene practices, and good people like you doing great things. That's the real weapon. Fact is, computer models, whether for climate or for disease, never factor in human ingenuity. It can't because human ingenuity is impossible to predict, except that you know it will be there when the going gets rough. And sure enough, it showed up because you did too. Nice job.